Japan Station is made possible in part by Patreon support. If you would like to make sure that I can keep bringing you more content like this, then head on over to japankyo.com slash Patreon and sign up for as little as $1 a month. Welcome to Japan Station, a production of japankyo.com. I'm your host, Tony Vega. This is a continuation of the conversation that I had in the previous episode with Alison Markin Powell, an accomplished literary translator who mainly translates Japanese fiction. She's translated uh, works by authors such as Dazai Osamu, Kawakami Hiromi, um, and many others. Uh, but in the previous episode, we talked about something totally different. So today we're talking about translating Japanese fiction. You don't have to listen to the previous episode to get this. In the previous one, we talked about uh, the book Black Box, the memoir that sparked Japan's Me Too movement. If you're curious about that, go check it out. Otherwise, stick around for this one because uh, it's going to be a fun conversation about translating Japanese fiction and how she became a translator of Japanese fiction. Uh, It's a bit shorter than usual, but again, that's because this is a continuation of the previous episode. Uh, So let's just get right into it. Here is the second part of my conversation with literary translator Alison Markin Powell. The next stop is Japan Station. The doors on the right side will open. Um, okay, so, uh, you know, I, I'm curious, like, so how did you go from, you know, trying to study abroad, you know, you go to mm-hmm. Kanazawa, and, and I, I remember in that interview, you mentioned you, it was like Japanese was kind of something you sort of stumbled across. It wasn't, mm-hmm. it, it seemed like it was mm-hmm. almost an accident, perhaps. But um, how did you end up then making, you know, ch- literary translation a, a career? Like, how did that whole transition go? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question, right? It's kind of <laughs> <laughs> random. Um, so, and I, you know, I, I, I know a lot. I, I, in my life now, I know a lot of other literary translators, and I've, re- I've read plenty of interviews with them. And you hear a lot of people say, "Oh, well, I just kind of stumbled into literary translation," but I went straight. I, I knew that's what something that I wanted to do. And the, the mm-hmm. fact is that there's no like path carved out to mm-hmm. becoming a literary translator. Like I said, m- many of these people just sort of happen to fall into it. Somebody asks them, okay, can you translate this book? And it ends up being Gabriel Garcia Marquez, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, so not re- recognizing that there is no path. I decided to, I guess, forge my own path. Mm-hmm. I studied Japanese, I studied Japanese language. And then, you know, as much, I studied comparative literature as an undergrad. And mm-hmm. then, um, you know, four years of Japanese study is not enough to even really read much Japanese in Japanese literature in Japanese. So I also went back to Japan to study more Japanese. And then I did a master's degree in modern Japanese literature. Mm -hmm. So I did try to do it that way. But I, I also knew at that point that I mean, many literary translators, especially many Japanese literary translators are academics Mm -hmm. because literary translation is very difficult to, you know, make a living at. Mm -hmm. Um, So most people have day jobs, but I knew that I was not cut out for academia. It was not a good match for me. Mm -hmm. So I decided to come at it from publishing, from the publishing Mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what I wanted to know was... uh, who decides which books are going to be translated? That's an interesting question. In I, yeah. I want to know that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Who are the people making the decisions? What are they basing these decisions yeah. on? There's you a know? whole lot more books in Japan that never make it here. So, yeah. Ex- exactly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and who, how do they decide who, who's doing the hiring? Who says, uh-huh. yes, you get to translate this book? And what's that based upon? So, you know, I went into trade book publishing to try and sort of understand how the industry works and Mm -hmm. who are the people who are making those decisions, who are the players and, Mm. and, and also, um, yeah, so I worked in publishing, I worked for in editorial departments, I worked in Japan, you know, for a Japanese company, for an American company, for, I worked for a literary agency, um, Mm -hmm. just like I said, just to sort of understand 
what, you know, how things move mm-hmm. and how, you know, rights go from one country to another. And, and yes. And then I started translating. Hmm. So uh, how did you get your first like big job? Like, did, did you manage to convince somebody or did they say, hey, you speak <laughs> Japanese here, give it a shot. Like, how does, how did that work? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's a, you know, it was sort of like asking questions and finding out who's doing this and telling them that this is something that I want to do and that I mm-hmm. aspire to do. But, but my first gig, mm-hmm. the first thing I was paid to translate was a manga series. Interesting. Okay. Yes. Yes. Huh. So, um, and that was, um, I, like, more than 15 years ago. And it was, you know, there was a big boom in manga being translated Mm, mm -hmm, into mm -hmm. English. Um, And so I was lucky enough to kind of get in on the first, at the beginning of a series. Mm -hmm, Uh, mm -hmm. So I translated like the first 12 volumes Mm. of a a manga, of a shonen manga series. And, um, Mm. And, you know, it wasn't you know, particularly literary, Um, but it was fun. Mm -hmm. And it's a great gig for a freelance translator because Mm -hmm. it's steady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's really good practice. And Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's, that was sort of how I started translating, uh, getting paid to translate. And then Mm -hmm. the first novel that I translated, uh, it's, it was, it's called Sensei no Kabam Mm. uh, by Kawakami Hiromi. Mm-hmm. And um, it was first published in the U.S. under the title "The Briefcase," mm-hmm. and um, then it was acquired in the U.K. and they changed the title to "Strange Weather in Tokyo," <laughs> Interesting. And, which is a completely different, obviously. And yeah. um, and it was it sold many, many, many more copies in the U.K. so uh-huh. much so that five years after it was published in the U.S., they reprinted and repackaged it. <laughs> And changed the title to Strange Weather in Tokyo yeah. in the U.S. So, and it has sold a lot more um, copies in that, you know, version. So it's, you know, like that's, you could do another episode, I guess, probably. On yeah, that yeah, and titles. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I, I get why, you know, Strange, it's such a, and Tokyo, you have the place name, you have, mm-hmm. you know, this kind of visual in your mind, Strange Weather, what could this mean? Briefcase yeah. to me sounds like a John Grisham, like legal novel. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a, and it's a strange, t- you know, if you've, yeah. if you've read the book, you know, uh-huh. the title is very, um, it's not that it's misleading, but it's, uh-huh. you don't really understand. It's very hard to understand, like, what, what does this title have to do with this story? Uh, and okay. so, <laughs> so, yeah, it yeah, does. yeah. yeah. Um, so. so obviously you're a translator, you enjoy translating, but, can you tell me something frustrating, something challenging, uh, something, something perhaps even irritating about <laughs> your job, about uh, translating? <laughs> um, let's see, frustrating and irritating. I think or it's, challenging at at the very least. Well, I mean, it's a, it, it's a very you know i I love translate. I love literature. I love reading, and I love bringing stories from Japan into you know to English readers so Mm -hmm. that's very it's extremely gratifying you know i mean Mm -hmm. i'm doing the job i'm doing the work that i want to be doing so i feel very lucky and i'm you know this is my living so Mm -hmm. um so that's great but Mm -hmm. the flip side of that is that it's a very difficult to make a living as a translator so we don't Mm -hmm. get very much i mean we have to fight we literally have to fight every Mm -hmm. time we sign a contract to Mm -hmm. get Mm -hmm. our name on the cover of our books Mm, wow they you know publishers don't want to put our names on the cover they don't want to pay us very much they don't want to give us royalties Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. we need to be in you know we need to be invested in the success of the books that we're translating i mean Mm -hmm. translate literary translation is a specialized form of writing yeah and i mean i do as a translator as a professional translator, I do a lot of advocacy mm-hmm. for translators mm-hmm. uh, to have better, like better working conditions. I mean, we don't have a union, but um, you know, we 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 get paid very little. So I'd say that's pro- that's probably the most frustrating mm, part about yeah. it. Um, but you know, there are a lot of um, there are certain stereotypes. I mean, I think that that's. Um, mm-hmm. And talking, going back to, more specifically to like Japanese translation sort of mm-hmm. expectations, like for it, it's changing, mm-hmm. but for mm-hmm. a while it was really everybody just wanted who's the next Murakami 
who's mm. the next Haruki Murakami? You know, they True. want more of that. And Murakami is such a singular yeah. writer. <laughs> Murakami is Murakami. Know, like, <laughs> enjoy yeah. it for what it is, right? Like, <laughs> right. And yeah. so, you know, but people who like Murakami, they want something that's kind of similar, you know, yeah. like the way that the algorithms say. Exactly. You, like you might also like this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, fighting against that, that expectation mm-hmm. or stereotype or whatever you want to call it. Um, mm-hmm. But I think we're actually... There have been a lot of new writers who mm-hmm. are being translated, whose work is being translated, and it's exciting. It's an, it's actually a pretty exciting time right now because there are a lot mm. of people, a lot of new writers, a lot of yeah. old, you know, established writers, and a mm. lot of women writers who are being published. So mm-hmm. I do a lot of work. I'm part of a collective called Strong Women, Soft Power, mm-hmm. and it's me and two other women who are translators of Japanese literature and we we work to promote Japanese women writers and mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. even in the sh- few years that we have been working on this we've seen a lot of progress and that's mm. also very gratifying oh that's great um l- loosely related to my previous question but what happens, do you, I, I guess, you know, we, we're all human. Sometimes I imagine you must get stuck on a certain sentence or phrase, you know, maybe do, do, what happens when, when you encounter that? Do you just leave it, come back later? Do you, do you like rewrite a lot? Like, how do you deal with the sort of like tricky things that, that you encounter when translating? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I tend, I, my my practice or my mm-hmm. style of translation, I do a relatively clean first draft. Mm-hmm. So I don't, it's, I work very slowly mm-hmm. through it. So I kind of have to feel pretty good. I mean, I, it, about something before I can move on to the next sentence. Oh, so I, okay. you know, I end up going down a lot of rabbit holes mm-hmm. trying to figure out like what is, you know, because a lot of times you'll translate something one way, you know, in this paragraph or in this chapter, and then mm-hmm. it will come, you know, you'll have yeah, to deal with that back, again yeah. later. So, yeah. so I kind of have to figure out how am I going to handle it? How am I going to address it mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. in translation? If I don't deal with it now, it's just going to come back and bite you. Mm-hmm. later so yes, um yes, yes. yeah that's just my my own i mean everybody has their own style of you know the, the way they do anything so mm-hmm. sure, sure, so, sure um yeah. can you think of any examples of like phrases or words that perhaps for whatever reason don't come up in a dictionary or something you you have to like kind of come up with your own uh interpretation of of how we could translate that <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, a lot, so much of it is also like, you know, style and yeah. dialect can always be difficult. True. Like, like, yeah. ka, I mean, Kaokami Hiromi has a very idiosyncratic style. And like, uh-huh. she has like, she has an, a, a character in one of her books. Mm-hmm. And I just read one of her early stories mm-hmm. from I think it's from her first collection. And you, I could see um, sort of the prototype of this same character. And he has this verbal tick. And he says, Dakarasa. <laughs> that he starts, he starts all of like, that's what he says, like, you yeah. know, in the beginning of his, you know, at the beginning of a sentence or, you know, when yeah. he starts speaking and it's like, you know, I had to figure out like, okay, well, this is like part of his personality, right? So how mm-hmm. am I going to, what can I use? And I think, I think what I did was like, you know what I mean? You right. know, like, yeah. you yeah. know what I mean? Like, and the, people say mm-hmm. that, you know, at the, you know what I mean? Like, that's how he starts a, an inter, you know, a, 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 se- a sentence or, yeah. you know, a dialogue, but it's like, he's not referring to anything. And the, the character is actually in this, in this book that I'm talking about, the Nakano Thrift Shop, by the way. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they say to him, like, you always say that, but like, don't you need to be referring to something when you say <laughs> yeah, Nakata? Yeah. You know? <laughs> and so... So, I mean, it, like, even something that's, like, that simple, yeah, you know, I yeah. mean, but the author is, that's a very deliberate choice of, mm-hmm. you know, a stylistic choice by the author, and she's giving, like, this sort of texture to the character. And so, you have to be as deliberate about the way that you translate it. Yeah, yeah But I yeah. think even, like, you know, those kinds of things, like, dayo, dane, desho, mm-hmm. you know, like, all of those can be the some of the most difficult things mm-hmm. to translate. Mm-hmm. You know, Definitely. like words, sure, like mono no aware, you know, like that's the sort of easy one that I always like would talk about. Like, sure. you know, the the pathos of things is difficult mm-hmm. to translate. Aishteru is difficult to translate. Yeah. Um, but, 
but I find you like those, it's those little things, you know, yeah, the, little, the things that the, have no innate like lexical yeah. meaning, right? Mm-hmm. The things that add mm-hmm. this sort of nuance and flavor to what you're saying, but yet yeah. have no direct translation in and of themselves, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you have to figure out how to represent them. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. You can't just gloss them over. So. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what does your mean? It's like, well, mm-hmm. mm, you know, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, last question: What what is the latest uh, uh, work of fiction that that you've uh, translated, and could you? Tell us a little bit about it. Oh, I'd love to. Mm-hmm. Um, well, so I trans- I'm trans. i translating because mm-hmm. the, in earlier this year, um, Soho Crime published volume one of Lady Joker okay. by Kaoru Takamura. Mm-hmm. And this is, um, I'm co-translating this with uh, a woman named Marie Ida. Mm-hmm. And um, this is a an epic novel that mm-hmm. was published in 1997 in Japan mm-hmm. and it's um i think the the bungobon is like 1500 pages so mm-hmm. that's why it's being published in two volumes wow yeah. it's a staggered volume so it's mm-hmm. um it's three volumes in in paperback in in Japan mm-hmm. and um it's a suspense novel um it's like based so it's a corporate thriller kidnapping extortion heist exciting it's 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 very exciting it's based on the glico morinaga case Uh that happened in the the in japan in the 1980s that was never solved is that um, like there was some sort of poisoning or something? Mm-hmm, that's right. Yeah? Okay, that's okay. Right. I have a very vague recollection of that, but yes, n- n- yes. Some people, yeah. some you know, some people remember it better than yeah. I mean, if you lived through it. Then, then, then yeah. people are like, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And it's this really uh-huh. bizarre crime, and so she uses that. That um, you know, she sort of transposes it. And it's a beer company, and um, she uses it to really explore many layers of society. I'm talking about Takamura, the the author, um, Mm -hmm. to explore many layers of Japanese society that um, it's extremely dense and interwoven. And it's a really fascinating picture of, um, you know, late 20th century Japan and how it, it sort of reaches all the way back to, you know, pre and post-war Japan. And Mm. it's, um, it's, it's fascinating. It's so well-written and um, interesting. Yeah, very, very richly detailed, but mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. it's a hard, It's been very difficult to translate and very challenging, very fun. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's a, it's a marathon. So I'm in the I am deep into volume two, and that will be published next year. Oh, okay. Is volume one out? <laughs> volume one came out in April, so it's oh available. wonderful. Okay, well, I'm, I'm very curious. <laughs> thank, thank you for uh, now. I have something to read. All right, <laughs> <laughs> keep you keep you busy. Volume one's about six hundred pages, so. <laughs> Okay, awesome, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> thank you. I will include the links for all those um, in, in the show notes, of course. But thank you so much for making time. I, I, I loved getting to talk about, you know, the, the translation side of things as well. So thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thank you for your questions and your interest and, and your support of Black Box. Of course, there will be links in the show notes for any of the books that Allison mentioned. Um, if you want to use Amazon to pick anything up, use japanki.com slash Amazon to support the show. Won't cost you anything extra. Amazon affiliate links will also be in the show notes. So I won't do the whole, whole, whole spiel that I always do at the end of every episode because this is a shorter episode and I don't want a fourth of the episode to be the whole thing that I do at the end. So I will just say, don't forget to subscribe, rate, review, tell a friend about the show, and uh, follow on Facebook and Twitter at Japankyo News. All right. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, go find your miniature pony. Just do it!